number one, I'm just going to go over the review sheet with you. So if you have any questions, you'll have them answered. So here's number one on the work on the review sheet. You have a graph that looks like this, and this is zero, one, and three, four, five, six, six, four, like this. And it looks something like that. So it says the figure shows the entire graph of f of x. Sketch the graph of its inverse. Well, if zero, one is on its regular graph, one, zero must be on its inverse because you interchange the x's and the y's. And if 6, 4 is on its original graph, then 4, 6 must be on its inverse graph. And it looks like this. This dotted line is the mirror. And it needs to look the same on both sides of the mirror for an inverse to work. Number two, you're supposed to state the domain and the range of the inverse. So I'm going to make this, like I said, this is the inverse. So my domain are my x values from 1 to 4. And my range are my y values from 0 to 6. Final answer. OK, um, number 3. f of x, I'm going to change it to y if you don't mine is x over 2 minus 5. They ask you to find the inverse. In order to find the inverse, all you do is you interchange your x's and your y's. Everybody see what I did on the second step? Now I'm just going to add 5 to both sides. That's not too hard. I need to get y alone. So all I need to do is multiply by 2. So it's 2 parentheses x plus 5 equals y, which is the same thing as 2x plus 10 on the back side of your answer key. You can leave it like that. That's perfectly fine. OK, the next problem, number four. They give you the function. That's the function. And you are supposed to graph the function. and you're supposed to graph the inverse function. So here's my graph. And I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. That's why I have an x and a y there. And there is a stipulation. x has to be greater than or equal to 0. There is your stipulation. That's important that you have to start with 0. You can't have anything less than zero on my chart. X has to be greater than or equal to zero. And I'm just going to do zero, one, and two. That should be plenty. So I'm going to plug zero back up into the original. When X is zero, Y is four. When X is one, four minus a half is 3.5. And when X is two, I'm going to get 2. And I'm just going to graph it. So, um, And before I graph it, I might as well, this is the f of x. So what is the points for the inverse? I don't have to get y, um, interchange the x's. All I'm doing is interchanging the points, just like I did in problem number 1. 3.5, 1, and 2, and 2. So um, I'll use my black for my original. So at 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 4, 1, 3.5, 2, 2, um, let's keep going. It's just going to keep going like this because remember, it's not going to just stop at 2. X can be greater than 2. So it just keeps going like that. My, my inverse is going to be in red. If 0, 4 is on the original, then 4, 0 is on its inverse. 3.51 and 2, 2. And it looks like this. And I know I'm going to try to get that dotted line on there. And there's that dotted line, which 
This is the mirror again. And it looks pretty good. So number five. F of G inverse of one. And then the other one is F inverse of G inverse of two. So you're gonna look at the G one. So look at your G, which is the third column. And look at one, and when you do a negative, remember you go up. So look at the G, look at one, and go all the way up to your X value which gives you a five right here. That should give you a five. But now they're asking you what F of five is, but there is no negative one right there, so it's not an inverse, so you're gonna go down. So F of five is two for your answer. And now let's do another one. G inverse of two, so look at your G, and go all the way up, and if you go all the way up, this equals three. And then they ask you to find F inverse of three, so you're gonna go back, you're gonna look at your F and go up. And if you go up, you get a two. So they're both twos. It just so happens that they're both twos on this problem. Again, if it's a negative one, if it's G of a negative one, you go up. If it's just G, you go down. So if you don't understand what I mean, um, you could probably try to zoom me on number five because it's hard to try to show you on a chart. Okay, number six. I'm going to leave the two the two, but I'm going to change the four to two to the second because four is the same thing as two to the second. And then x plus two. Just set your exponents equal to each other because your base numbers are the same. Subtract 2x, you get x equals 5 for number 6. Um, number 7. I'm going to write it down again. y equals 2 to the x minus 2. I like writing it in this form. And when I taught it to you, there this would be in parentheses and there'd be imaginary one right there. This is where you put your first dot on the y-axis at one. This is gonna move your dot down two. So down two, here's my final answer dot. I started at one, that's my initial, this is my initial, but I gotta move the dot down two. I also have to move the horizontal axis down to, which is down here. This number in here is greater than one, so it's going to increase. So just make your graph increase. So there's number seven. If you look at number seven, that's exactly what it looks like. Don't forget to put the ha, the horizontal asymptote, on the test. That's considered one point on the test by putting it on there. Okay, number eight y equals b a to the x plus c the horizontal asymptote is given as y equals one the y intercept is given as zero four and a point is given which is one comma thirteen you're going to work backwards this is going to give you the letter c this is going to get you the letter b and this one will get you the letter a so I'm going to put in y equals b a to the x, and the c is the horizontal asymptote. It's 1. So that's done. How do I get my b? In place of my x, I'm going to put a 0. In place of my y, I'm going to put a 4. And you're going to leave your b and your a in there, but a to the 0 power is 1, so that's gone. So b is going to equal 3, because b plus 1 needs to equal 4. And now we're going to do it again. y equals b a to the x plus 1. Fill in your b now. So I'm going to erase my b. I'm going to fill my b in with the 3. a to the x plus 1. We're going to use this to find the a. y is 13. x is 1 plus 1. You're going to subtract 1. You're going to get 12 equals 3a. So a equals 4. 
So your final answer is y equals, I found that my b is 3, I found that my a is 4, I leave my x with my plus 1. Final answer. Number 9. They give you the equation as y, or f of t, same thing, as 365 over 4 to the t. The bacteria culture started at 8 a.m. Estimate the number of bacteria in the culture at noon. T stands for time. You started at 8 a.m. They want to know at noon. From 8 a.m. to noon has been 4 hours. So all you're going to do is put 4 in for t, plug it all into your calculator, and you should get what the answer is for number 9, and the answer is 879 bacteria, just by plugging in 4 in for t and using your calculator. Number 10, e to the 2x equals e to the x plus 4. These are the same. All you have to do is set your exponents equal to each other. x equals 4. Number 11. The figure shows the graph of um, y equals e to the x. Um, basically, this is the part, there's a little imaginary one right there, and that's why your graph starts at 1, 0, or I mean 0, 1, sorry, and then it increases because E is about 2.718, so that's why it increases. All they want you to do is graph Y is equal to E to the X minus 2. You're just going to shift everything down 2. So that dot, I'll change colors, the dot used to be there, now the dot's here, and then your asymptote gets moved down to, and it still increases. You're just moving everything down to for number 11. Okay, number 12. You're gonna use this formula. Pert, find the amount equals pert. What is the amount in the account if you invest $500 is invested for six years at the annual rate of 4%, what's the amount in the account? Well, A stands for the amount. P stands for the initial value, which is 500. E is just a number on your calculator. The rate is 0 0.04, because you have to change 4% into a um, decimal and six. So all you do is you plug it into your calculator Put 500 in. Your E button is located above your LN. It's over by the log button. So you should be able to find this. It's right above the LN button. There should be an E to the X. All you do is plug that all into your calculator. And I'm hoping you have more money than $500. It should turn out to be, for number 12, $635.62. Round to the nearest cent. Number 13. Um, same thing here. A equals R E to the negative point zero one six T. Number 12 is all about banking. This is more of a chemistry, physics problem, radioactive. Um, how much should be required now in order to have 30 grams remaining after four days? 30 grams remaining after, um, you want it to remain 30 E to the negative point zero one six, and four days is four. The amount of radioactive trace remaining after T days is this, what R is the starting amount. How much should be acquired now in order to have 30 grams remaining? This is your final. You want the 30 to be on the left hand side. So all you have to do is take this number, put it into your calculator, and 30, and to get R alone, all you have to do is take 30 and divide it by whatever that number is in your calculator. So 30 divided by E 
to the negative point zero one six times four, and you should get what you started with. And you should have more than what you end with. So the answer for number 13 ends up being 32 when you plug this into your RAM, into your calculator like that. Number 14, I'm going to star this one. I'm going to do an A problem, and I'm also going to add one. So you might have a basic one like this one on the test. And when you ever just have a log and you're solving for x, all you're going to do is the loop around. 2 to the x power equals 8. A lot of you know that 2 to the third power equals 8. Now I'm going to do a second one. And I, I said this one in our, um, on December 8th. At the Zoom meeting, I explained how to do this one. If you have a 7... And it's a log, a base 7, and there's like a number 12 right there. What's the answer to the problem? If this number and this number match up, and you also have a log, you should know what the answer is. The answer is going to be 12. So keep in mind, how do you do a problem like that? I showed you how to do it on December 8th at the Zoom meeting, and now I'm showing you again. And what happens if there's a 2 in front of here? Where does this 2 have to go? Doesn't it have to go over here? So keep in mind, watch out for, for number 14 on the test. Number 15, there's a log of base A on both sides, so all you have to do is set those two equal to each other. So 5x equals 30, x equals 6. So that's number 15. And we just have 10 more problems to go over, and that's about it. Number 16, this is the graph. This is the original graph. And all I'm going to do is move up everything up to. So this dot gets moved up to, and that's it. I'm going to change colors on you. If it would have been in parentheses like this, it would have moved to the right five. If this would have been a plus, it would have moved to the left five. And move everything, move the asymptote, and move the dot. So keep in mind, that's number 16. Number 17, A equals P, parentheses, one plus R to the N, raised to the NT. And they want you to get P alone in this problem. So if they want you to get T alone in the problem, the first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by P. So the first thing I did was I divided by P. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to log both sides of my problem. Because whatever you do to one side, you can do to the other side. So I lost both sides. Do you know what you can do with this little NT? I can move it out in front. So now it looks like the log of A divided by P equals NT log of 1 plus R divided by N. And we're trying to get T alone. We're trying to get this one alone. So all I'm going to do is divide everything. So my log of A over P. I'm just going to divide by this and this. So you're going to have an n down there, and you're going to have a log of 1 plus r over n down there. Equals the letter p. And number 18, d, decibels equals 10 log of something divided by 10 divided by a negative 12. The t is given, the t is given as 3.3 times 10 to the negative 6. All you have to do is take your calculator out, put 10 in, hit the log button, use parentheses, 
and put this all into your calculator and it should give you the answer for number 18. And number 18 should end up being 65 decibels. Number 19. Oh, here's that problem. 4, 2, log a base 4 of 8 equals x. This 4 matches up with this 4 and it deals with the log. What's the answer that x would equal in this problem? Would the x equal 8? Nope. Because you have to take that 2 and move it out in front. So the answer that you should get is x equals 64 because x is equal to 8 squared. Number 20, combine these as one log. You're going to write it as one log of base 8, and there's a plus sign, which means you need to multiply. So the x squared, and then you need an x plus 3. And I'm going to simplify it to x cubed plus 3x squared. I'm going to see if the answer key did that. Let me check it really quick here. No, the answer key left it as this. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Again, plus means to multiply them. So, And the last five problems. 21, the natural log of x minus 4 plus the natural log of 5 equals the natural log of x plus 4. Again, there's a plus sign, which means to multiply these together. So I have to do the distributive property. And they're both natural logs, so all you do is you set the 5x minus 20 equal to the x plus 4. So 4x equals 24, x equals 6. That was quick, but I think you'll understand how to do 21. And then 22. P equals 100E to the RT. And you're trying to find the R or the rate. Um, the population is now 300, so it grew from 100 to 300, E to the 6R, because you're trying to find the rate. The first thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by 100 to get my E alone, so 3 equals E to the 6R. And there's an E in the problem. Whenever there's an E in the problem, you have to natural log both sides. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. I take that little 6R and I put it out in front. And a lot of you know that the natural log of E is equal to 1, so that's gone. So the natural log of 3 divided by 6 is going to be your R. Natural log of 3 divided by 6 is going to be your R. And your R in number 22 is going to be 0.18 for 18%. 23, 2 to the x plus 3 equals 3 to the x. There is no e in the problem, so I'm going to log both sides. Bring the x plus 3 out in front. So I'm going to divide both sides by the log of 3. So I'm going to take the log of 2 and divide it by the log of 3. The log of 2 divided by the log of 3. And I am going to get on this side 0.631 equals x because I divided by the log of 2 divided by the log of 3. Then I'm going to do the distributive property, which is 0.631x's plus 1.893 equals x. I'm going to bring this over, so 1.893 equals 0.6. And then in order to get x alone, 
divided by 0.369, and it should turn out to be 5.13 is good enough. Final answer for 23. And then 24 and 25. How many years will it take the initial investment to grow? You want to go from 15, you want to go from 1,000 to 1,500 E to the 0 0.05 to 0 0.6, and you're trying to figure out the time. How long, how many years is the time? Again, you have to get E alone by dividing both sides by 1,000. You're going to get 1.5 is equal to E to the 0 0.0506T. There's an E in the problem, so I'm going to natural log both sides. I kind of skipped a step. I took this and I put it out in front of the natural log of E. This ends up becoming 1. So whatever the natural log of 1.5 is divided by 0 0.0506, which is about eight years. And 25 is pretty much the same concept. How long will it take for one half of the original to decay? So you want one half of it. So I'm just gonna make up a number. If this is two, this needs to be four. If this is one, this needs to be two because you want it to change, you want it to go, you wanna start with one and only uh, do one half of it left. This could be a six and this number's three. It doesn't matter. Um, so I'm gonna start with four, but I wanna end with one half of it gone, so that's two. E to the negative 0 .09, 0 0.099 T. Again, you have to get E alone. I have to divide both sides by four. You get one half equals a negative point zero nine. Whoops, I forgot the e part. I just divided by four, and it's e to the negative point zero nine nine t. There's an e in the problem, so you have to take the natural log of one half equals the natural log of e to the negative point zero nine nine t. This can go out in front, so it's the natural log of one half divided by the negative point zero nine nine equals the t because the natural log of e is 1 and you are going to get for your final answer 7 days and that is the whole review worksheet done out for you 1 through 25